For the second straight cycle in a row, Shane Beamer and the South Carolina Gamecocks have brought in a top-notch recruiting class. And that's highlighted by the guys that they brought in at the offensive line and quarterback positions. You are Locked On Gamecocks, your daily podcast on the South Carolina Gamecocks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, Gamecock Nation, and welcome back to the Locked On Gamecocks Podcast. I'm Andrew Lyon, the host of this podcast and also a staff writer for Gamecock Digest over on SI.com. Thank y'all so much for making the Locked On Gamecocks podcast your first listen or watch for your team here today. We are free and available both on YouTube and wherever you get your audio podcasts daily. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. Make every moment more right now as new customers can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. When it comes to high school football recruiting, obviously, if you're a head coach like Shane Beamer, you want to bring in the best talent at every position you possibly can. But obviously, unless you're at one of the biggest name programs in college football, such as an Alabama or maybe a Georgia and potentially also an Ohio State, you're not going to always have that kind of luxury. And so there's a few specific positions that you always want to make sure that you're nailing, especially in this new era of the transfer portal and NIL. And South Carolina's football staff continues to nail the two most important positions on the offensive side of the ball. They've done it now for the second straight cycle in a row. And those two positions that I'm talking about are the offensive line and quarterback positions. So, I know that some people might want me to give a grade out for each and every one of these position groups. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not going to do it on today's show, but I will give you a grade for these two positions. Starting off with the offensive line, I would give this position group an A. I think that this one is pretty doggone obvious if you're a South Carolina fan that follows recruiting quite closely. With landing Josiah Thompson, Cam Pringle, and Blake Franks, South Carolina is checking off several key boxes for that position group. One is strengthening their recruiting ties because all three of these guys hail from the Palmetto State. They are listed as three of the top seven prospects in the state of South Carolina for the 2024 class, according to On3 Sports. So, keeping the best talent in the state home and in Columbia, for one, is already a big deal, but two, when you do it at a key position like offensive line and you basically prevent your biggest rival in Clemson from getting any of these guys, especially a Blake Franks, who at one point this past year looked like he might commit to Clemson, that's a pretty big deal. And if you're shaping him in this staff, you deserve to pat yourselves on the back for accomplishing that. Now, the other thing about this group is these guys are going to bring size to the offensive line. And it's not like that size is really an issue with the group already. But if it was, well, these three guys, they would solve that pretty quickly. All three of these guys average out at a height of six foot six and a third inches. And they have weights of 340, 325, and around 280-something pounds talking about Josiah Thompson at the end there. But all three of these guys, if you averaged out their weight, would probably average over 300 pounds as well. So they're not going to have any issue in terms of having to put on a ton of weight. Josiah Thompson, sure, he's going to have to add probably about 20, 25 pounds to play or, you know, really be a fixture potentially in the 2D for South Carolina next year. But if he's able to do that, if he can attack the offseason in the right way when it comes to his nutrition and the strength and conditioning program, then a guy like Josiah Thompson, he could potentially see the field in year one. The last thing I want to note about this position group that's very important here, their strengths lie in run blocking. Now, that does not mean that these guys cannot pass block. I saw some of these guys pass block in their highlight reels from their senior year. But, you know, they could have come from high schools where running the football was maybe more of a priority. I believe that that was the case with Josiah Thompson at Dillon High School. But how does this correlate over to South Carolina and what it means for them? Well, 
you struggled mightily to run the football in 2023. And obviously, you can point to offensive line injuries. You have to to a certain extent. But it also cannot be denied that even with the guys South Carolina had available for the majority of this past season, uh, no one really was good enough or consistent enough when it came to run blocking. So, you know, who knows? Maybe it's a bit a, a scheme issue. Maybe these guys aren't meant to run a zone blocking scheme where they have to go and essentially cover an area and any defender that's in the area. We'll find out more the answer to that question or to that hypothetical once 2024 comes around and we see Dow Loggins in year two as South Carolina's offensive coordinator. But all three of these guys, whether it is you know, gap run blocking schemes or zone blocking schemes, their strengths lie in run blocking. That's the most important thing for South Carolina, and that's something that they're addressing by landing this trio in this 2024 class. So for all those reasons, offensive line, that group gets an A, and it's by far the highest graded group that I have out of South Carolina's entire class position-wise in 2024. Now, Switching gears over to quarterback real quick. Dante Reno, the only quarterback that South Carolina got in this class. But obviously, these days really, you want to get one guy. You want to try to land your top target in that respective cycle. And Dante Reno, really from the beginning, when South Carolina first scouted him and evaluated him, he was their top target. Dante Reno, he reciprocated that interest, committed all the way back in like June or July of 2022. It's been a year and a half in the making, him signing eventually with South Carolina. And with the Gamecocks landing him, I give that position, or basically Dante Reno, a B+. If you're a South Carolina fan looking at Dante Reno, he gives you a lot to like. Firstly, in terms of his performance on the field, his on-field skill set, his biggest strength, in my opinion, is his accuracy and the touch that he can put on his passes in order to deliver the best ball to his receivers. And that is something that you do not always get with every single quarterback. Again, you ask any coach out there, what's the one thing that you want your quarterback to be able to do? And besides recognizing opposing defenses and going through the reads properly, coaches would tell you in terms of pure arm talent, they want their quarterbacks to have accuracy. Dante Reno is going to have that when he comes to Columbia. He is also a guy that, as was shown in this 2024 recruiting cycle, guys are going to galvanize around him. He was essentially an architect of this 2024 class. Obviously, Shane Buber and his staff deserve a ton of credit for the work they put in. But Dante Reno, I mean, if they could actually like legitimately pay him for how much he probably helped them land some of these guys, they probably would do it because Dante Reno, he made a point of emphasis to always stay in contact with some of these guys, to try and check in on other guys that, you know, maybe was on the fringe, maybe guys that could potentially be in this class. He helped out this coaching staff a great deal. And also, if you always noticed, when it came to some of these bigger name targets, usually Dante Reno was involved in some form or fashion. And that tells you how much guys like to be around Dante Reno. And I'm sure if he can do that with guys over social media, he could probably do it to an even higher degree in a locker room and having guys rally around him as a leader. And that leads me into my final point. Dante Reno is the son of a football coach. Those kind of players, they're just a little bit different. They're cut from a different cloth. These guys understand the game like the back of their hand. Dante Reno's learning curve when it comes to transitioning to college life and being a college quarterback, it is going to be a lot lower than it would be for other quarterbacks, even guys that might have a bit more notoriety than he has had coming out of high school. But Dante Reno being a coach's son, I think that that means that essentially him going through spring practice and maybe just getting one off season in this program he is going to quickly progress through anything that may be. It takes him a couple times to learn in this new offense and in this new stage of his football career. So look, with Dante Reno, if all things work out great with Lenora Sellers, you're hoping that it will take at least two more years before you have to think about Dante Reno being the starting quarterback. However, again, cannot stress it enough. You have to land your guy in every single cycle. 
especially with the transfer portal age now. You never know when one guy's going to walk out the door. Dante Reno, I don't see that with him. And I think that he is the perfect guy to sit behind Lenore Sellers, see what he does, and kind of just wait in the wings until it's his time. So for that reason, I give the quarterback position a B-plus grade for the Gamecocks in this 2024 cycle. Now, admittedly, it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows in this class. And it wasn't really so much from a quality standpoint. We know the quality was great. But it was more so from a quantity standpoint at three specific positions that could come back to haunt South Carolina to a certain extent either next season or beyond 2024. We'll touch on those three position groups in just a few moments right here on Locked On Gamecocks. Today's show is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. Now, we are really close to Christmas actually taking place, and with that, that also means that you're probably getting ready for your end-of-year sales events at your small business. So you might have a bunch of inventory that you've had sitting there for a good while and it's time to get it out the door. And so, obviously, if you're trying to create more business, well, quite frankly, you're going to have to hire more employees for your small business. And you might be worried because you want to have top-tier candidates to fulfill those roles. You don't have to worry because LinkedIn Jobs will have you covered. Because hiring is easy when you have many quality candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours when they use LinkedIn Jobs. And LinkedIn Jobs knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats. And because of that, you might not have time or resources to put towards the hiring process for finding these candidates. So, if you're a small business owner and you're looking for the right candidates for your small business, post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free today. Terms and conditions do apply. Welcome back to this rare Saturday edition of the Locked On Gamecocks podcast. Where we cover your South Carolina Gamecocks every single day. And as always, a big thank you to each and every one of you everydayers who make the Locked On Gamecocks podcast your daily listen wherever you get your audio podcasts daily or your daily watch on YouTube. Now, as I mentioned just a couple moments ago, the quality of this 2024 class for South Carolina is top notch. And quite frankly, it's better than multiple teams that are listed ahead of them in these recruiting rankings. But admittedly, if there's one sort of critique that you could have about this 2024 class for Shane Beamer and this staff, it's the fact that there's a few position groups where you probably would have liked to bring in more guys at that particular spot. So let's talk about those three position groups real quick. And I'm going to start off with probably the most obvious and most glaring answer when it comes to this topic, and that is the defensive tackle position. South Carolina only brought in one guy for the 2024 class at this spot. And that was junior college defensive tackle Jerome Simmons. Now, as I've talked about with Jerome on previous shows, I think he was a good pickup. I think that it definitely fit a need in terms of getting another nose tackle type player along that defensive line and someone that can definitely help out as a rotational piece, at least in 2024. But when you look beyond just the pickup of Jerome Simmons, South Carolina, they really need to get some guys in this class just to have some youth in that room. Here's the class breakdown for the defense tackle position. This is going to really shock some of you, I think. South Carolina, at the defensive tackle position for 2024, they will have two super seniors, essentially guys in their final year of eligibility, one fifth-year senior, two fourth-year seniors, one junior, Jerome Simmons, and a third-year sophomore. There will not be any first-year or second-year players at the defensive tackle position for this team this next fall. That is absolutely mind-boggling. And there's been very few occasions where I've actually seen this take place at any position group on South Carolina's football roster. Now, obviously, there's still some time left in this transfer portal cycle, and I'm sure that Shane Beamer and his staff have been continuously working to try and find some younger guys 
at the defensive tackle spot that they could take and just bring into their program, again, as young guys, that they could actually mold and develop. Because you've got to have that. But, as of right now, South Carolina, look, it's great the amount of experience that you have, and experience definitely matters. But you've got to have a good mixture of older guys and younger guys that can develop and take over those roles when the older guys eventually walk out the door. Right now, South Carolina, they are in dire straits when it comes to that aspect at the defensive tackle position. 2025, that is going to be a pivotal year, a pivotal cycle for South Carolina at defensive tackle. You've got to get at least two, probably three, four guys, including the transfer portal additions that you might add on. Because if you don't, who oh boy, you're going to be in trouble at that spot in 2025. Now, another position where South Carolina probably would have liked to bring in more guys is the cornerback position. Now, obviously, they did have two guys for the majority of this calendar year. But unfortunately, with Braden Lee and obviously all the circumstances that he's been dealing with with the loss of his father from earlier this year, he decided to stay home. He flipped to Maryland on early National Signing Day. Cannot blame him for that whatsoever. Wish him the best of luck moving forward. And again, that's probably something that the South Carolina should have seen coming. And so now, the Gamecocks are left with just one cornerback signee, and that is Drew Lewis Solomon. And don't get me wrong, Solomon is a really good addition in this class, and I think he is going to make an impact sooner rather than later for this team. But when you just look at the numbers at the outside cornerback position, You've got four guys there right now, including Jalewis Solomon. So it would be nice. It would have been nice if South Carolina had got another guy alongside Jalewis Solomon. As a matter of fact, I will say this. If South Carolina's coaching staff knew maybe a couple weeks out from National Signing Day, or early National Signing Day, I should say, that Brayden Lee could potentially flip to the Maryland Terrapins. You probably should have gone after anybody else in that high school class. You probably should have made any last-minute checks. And who knows? Maybe the staff did, and they just could not really peg anybody or, you know, put a name on the board where, hey, that guy is still open to potentially going elsewhere or maybe is uncommitted, and we are a team of interest. Maybe they went through all their guys, and they just could not find anyone. It happens sometimes. But it certainly does hurt when it. you look at this group and behind O'Donnell Fortune, again, I've talked about this before, there's like 14 total tackles amongst all the other guys that are projected to be in that room this next season. And now you've got one less body that you were projected to have for the longest time in Braden Lee because of his flip to Maryland. So, you know, I've talked about transfer portal needs as well on this show. You're going to need to get an outside corner. And now you probably need to get two more than likely. Maybe a guy after spring practice is over. See how these guys do in spring ball. And then maybe reassess and go from there. But without a doubt, would have liked to get more than one outside corner in this class. And the last position group that I want to talk about real quick is edge rusher. Now, again, obviously quality here was not an issue. Your best commit, probably the best player, potentially the best player out of this whole class, Dylan Storch is an edge rusher. So, if you're going to only land one guy at a pivotal position like edge rusher, that's the kind of guy that you absolutely want to get. The reason, though, I think that you would like to add more than one guy in this class at this spot is because this room, the best way I could put it right now, it's becoming congested. That room's becoming congested with guys that, for one reason or another, they have not fully proven themselves at South Carolina, whether it's because of youth whether it's because of maybe injuries maybe they have a limited ceiling or now the fact that South Carolina they are changing their defensive scheme their base defensive scheme it seems like moving forward now Dylan Stewart obviously he's going to come in and provide an immediate impact more than likely he will be starting for this team this next fall I would be very surprised if he was not starting but you've got a lot of guys right now where you just don't know what to make of their futures at South Carolina. You don't know if they're going to make an impact for this team or if, quite frankly, that's another position group where eventually Shane Beamer's going to sit some of those guys down and say, hey, look, 
Um, you've had a couple years here, and quite frankly, you just haven't done a whole lot on the field. I think it's best for the both of us if you enter the transfer portal. It may have happened with the wide receiver room this offseason. The edge rusher group could be next, this next offseason. If some of those guys in that group don't take a massive step forward on the field next year. And that is why, in my opinion, it would have been nice. It would have been really helpful to have another young guy alongside Dylan Stewart pushing all these older guys. And who knows? That could still be a guy like a Desmond Mayo Zulu who's already been here for a season. But this is why, in my opinion, you still would have liked to have at least one more player at that spot for this class. Now, South Carolina did wind up losing a player from their 2024 class as a whole in wide receiver Jaden McGowan just a day ago. But they also added a wide receiver in their high school signing class in DeBron Gatling. So what are my thoughts on the loss of McGowan? The quick thoughts on that. And also what DeBron Gatling is going to offer that Jaden McGowan admittedly was not going to be able to bring to this football team in 2024. I'll touch on that in just a couple moments right here on Locked On Gamecocks. Today's show is also brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. As the weather gets colder, the NFL offers are staying hot on FanDuel. Right now, new customers on FanDuel can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. We've got NFL action taking place later today as the Cincinnati Bengals will go on the road to take on a divisional rival in the Pittsburgh Steelers, a team that has a lot of negative headlines surrounding it right now between George Pickens, maybe the future of their head coach and Mike Tomlin, and for those reasons, FanDuel is slightly favoring the Bengals here as the money line for the Bengals is set at minus 156 and the money line for the Steelers is set at plus 132. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is easy to use, and you can bet on everything from spreads to player props, over-unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season with FanDuel, an official partner of the NFL. Welcome back to today's edition of the Locked On Gamecocks podcast, where we cover your team every single day in just 30 minutes. Now, South Carolina, they did lose a portal commit on Friday, the final day of the early National Signing Day period, as Vanderbilt transfer Jaden McGowan flipped his commitment from South Carolina to Boston College. Now, admittedly, when Jaden McGowan did not sign on Wednesday, this was a move that a lot of people probably saw coming. You know, Jaden McGowan there was rumblings that he apparently got a more enticing NIL offer from Boston College, and I think that he also wound up taking a visit to Boston College this past weekend after he had just taken a visit to South Carolina. So obviously, a lot of stuff going on there, and you know, there's some fans that feel some type of way about the way that that whole thing went down, but we're not going to necessarily address that. We're going to address how this affects South Carolina itself. So... With the Gamecocks, obviously, you lose a potential rotational piece at your slot position in 2024 with Jay McGowan flipping his commitment to Boston College. However, South Carolina, they did land another wide receiver a few days ago as DeBron Gatling, a wide receiver from Milton High School in Georgia, committed to the Gamecocks on Wednesday, the first day of the early National Signing Day period. So in essence... They kind of got a bit of a trade there. DeBron Gatling is in, and Jay McGowan is now out and heading on to Boston College. And if y'all recall, when I talked about some of the biggest needs remaining for South Carolina in this current portal cycle earlier this week, I talked about how South Carolina needed a number one wide receiver, particularly an outside wide receiver. And the fact that right now, South Carolina's wide receiver room is, they had a lot of slot types that were coming in or that are currently on this roster. You get a guy like DeBron Gatling, that is going to help fulfill that need. I'm not saying that Gatling is going to be a number one guy for the Gamecocks as soon as he gets to campus. I don't think that's going to happen, but he does have a lot of likable qualities when it comes to his game. 
athletically speaking, DeBron Gatling has got everything that you want in an SEC wide receiver. He's got a great release, his acceleration is off the charts, and his top end speed is quite good as well. Gatling was beating defensive backs in off-man or zone coverage at the 7A level in Georgia high school football. That's something that you do not say very much. And for guys like him, they're doing that at that high of a level in Georgia. They usually are playing power four college football at the next level. So again, from an athleticism standpoint, DeBron Gatling, he's got everything you want in terms of speed and being able to create separation. Positionally speaking, he can operate both outside the numbers and in the middle of the field when it comes to the passing game. He is not just strictly a guy where you just tell him to run a bunch of go routes or a lot of long developing one cut routes downfield. Gatling is a guy where you can throw a quick out to. You can also throw something over the middle of the field where he's going to take a hit. But DeBron Gatling can catch the football and survive that contact from the opposing defender. And his route tree is also advanced for his age. Now, the only thing that I am unsure of with DeBron Gatling at this current point in time is his perimeter blocking skills. When I watched back some of his highlights from his senior season at Milton High School, I did not see any place where he was blocking. You watch Maceo Bennett, obviously. He almost takes pride in being able to block an opposing defensive back and put him in the dirt. Didn't see that with DeBron Gatling. Who knows? Maybe he's got that in him, and it just wasn't shown on the highlight reel. But if you're at South Carolina, and in particular in the SEC, You've got to be a guy that at least is going to give effort in that aspect. So we'll see what that looks like when DeBron Gatling gets to campus and is a part of this football team in 2024. But there is one thing that I do feel very confident in saying overall. And that is the fact that I think that DeBron Gatling is going to see the field this next season. I think that he is going to be in the rotation. And I think that as time wears on, DeBron Gatling stays at South Carolina. He develops here under the guise of wide receivers coach Justin Stepp. When the fans look back on this pickup in the 2024 class, it'll be looked at as almost a steal because of how late in the cycle it took place. We rarely see flips these days, and it wasn't technically a flip. But DeBron Gatling was committed to Texas A&M for like a year and a half. Obviously, a coaching change there probably helped out the Gamecocks in terms of their chances. But you take them however you can get them these days. And with DeBron Gatling, I think that South Carolina, they are fulfilling part of their need on this roster. And for that reason, you know, I would say that South Carolina only needs to get two more wideouts from the transfer portal. If DeBron Gatling had not committed to the Gamecocks, if nothing really happened and Gowan and McGowan still flipped to Boston College, I would say South Carolina needs to get three more wide receivers. But with Gatling and what he offers, I think you can say that they only need to get two more guys. That's how much faith I think South Carolina's coaching staff is going to have in this kid when it comes to his skill set and what he can bring to South Carolina's receiver room in 2024. So with that being said, that's going to do it for today's edition of the Locked On Gamecocks podcast. I hope y'all thoroughly enjoyed today's show, as always. Who would y'all grade out as the best position groups for South Carolina's 2024 signing class? What position groups do you think South Carolina needed to land more guys at? And also, what are your thoughts on Jaden McGowan leaving South Carolina's commitment class and DeBron Gatling joining them on early National Signing Day? Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section if you watch today's show on YouTube or you can shoot me a direct message on X at a line underscore SC if you listen to today's show on an audio podcast app. But as always, thank y'all so much for tuning in. Have a great rest of your Saturday and have a happy holiday weekend. I'll be sure to catch y'all on the next show of the Locked On Gamecocks podcast.